Good morning and welcome to the Return Homestead. My name is Mike and my wife Marty and I homestead 50 acres in southeastern Kentucky. Today it's time to start getting our fall preparations in line. We've got to start getting the yard and the garden ready for winter and there's a lot of work to do. Well, we've discovered that trying to homestead and garden while also doing a remodel, it's kind of a hard thing to do. Things get out of hand out here in the garden real quick, especially when you're focused on harvesting. So we've been having a massive harvest of peppers. Marty's getting more than enough hot sauce made for the year, but that's about all we've been focused on is collecting peppers and processing. We haven't uh, had the time or made the time to do a whole lot of work in the garden. It's well overgrown. The elderberries are all spent. We've got a peach tree uh, over here behind the mulberry. It's looking beautiful. It's doing really well. It's going to need some attention this winter. Also, these mulberries are going to need to be trimmed up quite a bit. We'll wait till uh, late winter to take care of those. Marty's calendula is still growing well, as are the other herbs. So her sage is doing fabulously well here. Already got a lot of sage in the jar. I'm not sure what she'll do with all of what's left over. But there's plenty of good herbs here. Marshmallow's still growing. She's still getting some chamomile. Not a massive plant, but it has produced a little chamomile for us this year. And the mullein looks like it may have played out, but there's another plant started. So we do still have plenty of mullein growing. This small stand of sunflowers did not do well at all. We got a, a few heads on there, but the weather has taken its toll on them, as has the blight. It's come up from the ground. We let the grass get too tall in around these sunflowers, and this is what happens. Once that grass gets tall, the ventilation stops and the blight sets in. That's what all those brown leaves are about. So not a lot of sunflowers off of this paddock, but we've got plenty still over on the side yard. Blueberries still haven't had any kind of a growth spurt. So this is the second year for them in the ground here. Actually the third year, I guess. And uh, we still don't have any massive growth off of those. Probably should uh, do a little soil testing, see what our pH level is. Raspberry still has not taken off. It's doing pathetically well. We're going to use that tiered garden down there to put the raspberries in. We just gotta get it cleaned up. The blackberries are going absolutely nuts. We've spent no time on managing these. And we've got all of these tendrils that have gone out that are now down in the grass and they'll be looking to root themselves in. So what happens is this little growing tip hits the ground and eventually it'll root itself, creating a whole new plant when the cane breaks in half. So these things are doing great. We're gonna spread them out quite a bit. We wanna add uh, at least as many blackberries again this year. We were really thrilled with our blackberry harvest. But I think today our main focus is going to be on chickens. We're still trying to manage all the roosters. I want to have at least two roosters in here. It's just uh, the number of chickens we have is really too much for a single rooster to take care of. You see Rocky's already got them hunkered down here in the late morning. Got them as out of the sun as they can be. They've already eaten. So they're just relaxing. But we do have a couple of wayward roosters in here still that Rocky's not sure he wants them to stay. And 
while we've been dealing with that, we've neglected the yard and it's gotten completely overgrown. So I need to get in here with a hedge clipper and knock some of these big weeds down. They do like to use them for shade. So they've been foraging really good in these tall weeds. But it's time to get these things knocked down before they start dropping seed. That way they'll add to the soil rather than creating the same problem again next year. The chicken gate. So the gate to the chicken yard though has seen better days. This is just what comes from using uh, the wrong type of screw and treated wood. And these incorrect screws do not stay in place. The wood dries out and then it rots around the screw and nothing will hold. So this gate has not only seen better days, but uh, it's coming apart on me. I need to get this corner of it fixed so we can continue to use it uh, while I work on figuring out what we're gonna do for a permanent solution. The chicken runs that I put together were designed for about three to five years. They weren't meant to be permanent structures. And it looks like we'll get another couple of seasons out of them. So they're serving their purpose. So far, there's no holes in the chicken wire. It hasn't come loose from the framing at all. And everything's still well closed in from the top. So they're still protected from aerial predators while they're in here. So these runs will still hold up for quite a while. The door on this chicken coop is working fairly well. The chickens tend to fill the track up and they block it up sometimes. But it's easy enough to clear out. So we don't need to make any modifications to this setup. Fig has grown in really nice this year. So far, no figs on it, but at least it's recovered. We thought we'd lost the fig entirely. We've got some pumpkins and squash that are trying to grow up here next to the chickens. They were doing well but they never produced any fruit. We had large flowers, but we did not have any bees. See our sorghum here is ripening up. This is almost ready to collect. We're gonna pull these seeds and use them to grow a whole field of sorghum next year. And that's just a voluntary plant that came up because chicken feed got pushed outside the fence. There's another type of sorghum. Also a well of millet. We'll collect that as well. Silkies are doing well. They're enjoying the cooler weather. We all have been enjoying that. But the door to their coop is not working out for me. It was a, sort of a thrown together idea, just a hinged lid that closes itself down over the opening and we just use a rope to hold it open during the day. But up first on today's agenda is to get the rest of this fencing out of here. You may not remember, but when we first started making videos, this was a full uh, chicken run. In fact, we had the guineas in here. So we had a small flock of guineas that used this run and there was a, a green chicken coop, a small coop that used to sit right about here. And we've removed that coop, but we haven't finished removing all of this fencing. So I need to get this fencing down today, get this area all cleaned up. We do have a large hole from where we dug out that box hedge. I've got some ideas for this hole. We may not fill it in. We may actually use it as a water catchment here at the top of the property. So in general, we're gonna be removing this fencing and just doing some general cleanup on this corner, getting the grass cut down so we can get a good look at what the ground looks like, see if we can get this cleaned up and maybe plant uh, some perennials up in this area. It should be really good soil. It's had birds on it for a lot of years. So it should be very high in nitrogen and ready to grow just about anything we'll plant here. And while we're at it, we'll probably have to break out the chainsaw and go ahead and get this apple tree cut apart. It has continued to grow all summer, <laughs> even though it's laying on the ground. So we'll get that cut up. I'll probably box up most of this wood, let it dry out. We'll use that later on when we get the smokehouse built. 
really pleased with how well this elderberry is growing. It's a little crooked right now. I'm not too worried about that. I can straighten the stem up. Um, it's just bent a little bit, the primary stem. Probably gonna need to trim back quite a few of these branches. They've grown out quite a bit more than expected here this summer. We've got a very sizable mulberry bush growing here. And we've got some variegation showing up in the leaves. I'm not sure if this particular variety is supposed to be variegated like this or if this is an indication of some sort of a deficiency in the soil. If you guys have seen this before, if anybody knows what this is or if they know for sure that this is just a normal reaction of this plant to the season, please let us know in the comments. Not have noticed it at first but those are walnut trees over our head so the walnuts are starting to fall probably collect these this year we didn't try husking any last year but i think we're going to give that a shot there's also a great method for making iodine uh, with these we definitely want to try that out and add that to our first aid kit The garden's got kind of out of hand and what Mike's doing currently is looking for the watermelons that are hidden in there. 
Hopefully no snakes. You want me to just pick these? Are they ready? Tendrils brown. Yep. It's small. We're eating the tendril after any. So that's the way you tell if a watermelon is ready to pick right on the opposite side of the stem from where the watermelon is attached there's going to be a little tendril sticking out and if it's brown and dead then the watermelon's not going to get any sweeter it's uh, gotten all of the sugar it's going to develop also the underside of it will turn a little yellow yep. so although these are relatively small the tendrils are definitely dead on them. That one's going to be really good. The one that's brown on the underside. Yeah. These are going to be nice. Uh -huh. Let's see if we got any more. There's one up above. Over by the wheelbarrow. It's yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it's a pretty good size. Mm -hmm. And after a little time on the weed eater, getting that fencing out up top, got the garden looking good again. At least Marty can see her peppers now. We're gonna need to get this apple tree out of here. I don't think I'm gonna get to this today. There was a lot more work on the weed eater that needed to be done than I expected. This is one of the honey locusts that Marty's been planting all over the place, doing well. We still need to get this area in front of the chicken coops cleaned out, but I need to uh, break off. Go take a look at this chicken gate. And we need some two by six to fix that gate. And I just happen to have some up here in the rafters. So what we're gonna do is get uh, some of those two by sixes down. This ought to be entertaining. Not really sure how I'm gonna get up there and get it, but we'll figure it out. I suspect that whoever put this lumber up here probably used the bucket of a tractor to lift it up and also to stand in while they put it up there. This is a little bit of a precarious situation. There's not really a lot of good support for the ladder, but the only way to get to this lumber is to use an extension ladder. So try to be really slow and methodical whenever I have to do crazy things like this especially if you're climbing up on a ladder. Take your time, don't get in a hurry. We found that often as homesteaders, we find ourselves in situations where we have to do something that is a little bit risky, that involves some potential for injury, even severe injury. Falling off this ladder would definitely be a way to end a good productive day out in the garden. I want to be really careful and just take my time. Sometimes you just gotta suck it up and get it done.
Yeah, this gate really bothers me. It really wasn't constructed in a way that would hold together over a long period of time. It is falling apart. Really the only thing holding it together is the fencing material that's stapled to it. But it's functional. It does hold the chickens in and it allows me access to the yard and so I haven't been in a hurry to replace it. We've got so many other projects going on. So the basic idea for repair is to insert a board next to this outside post of the gate. It's definitely rotted away too far. There's no way to make a connection to the top plate of the gate. So we're just going to stick a new board in behind it. See if I can secure that in place well enough to stabilize the gate and hold it together for at least a few more months. Probably sometime in the near future we're going to begin working on fencing around this garden and try to get this backyard completely fenced in. And we'll take a look at this gate while we're working on that. We also need to rearrange some of this fencing around the chicken yard. Eventually it will become a sheep yard. So I need to stiffen up the fencing and make sure that it's going to be sufficient to contain sheep. And at that time this gate's definitely getting replaced. I'll definitely put in something much more robust. Probably something with a self-closing feature that allows us to walk through and have the gate closed behind us automatically. Yep, that's a good fit. That'll take care of this post. The top rail is also starting to deteriorate. When I run screws down through it, it's going to split. There's not much way that's going to last more than another year or so, but at least we'll have a functioning gate for right now. And just a few more screws to secure this in place and we'll take a look at the latch for the gate. It's probably not going to remain where it is. There's no way to run the screw into the wood any deeper. The wood's just coming apart right there where the latch is attached so we'll have to move that to a new location. That takes care of the post. All I have to do now is move this latch down a little bit. It's going to make it a little harder to reach the latch. The gate's short enough. I just reach over the top to unlatch it from the inside. Uh, Marty's not going to be able to reach over the top of this once I move the latch down though. We got the latch fixed. It'll now hold the gate closed, but the gate doesn't open very well. It's sagged quite a bit on the post since the last time I adjusted it. It's a simple solution. Just get some of the dirt away from the bottom of the gate so it'll swing freely.
like the chickens approve of their new improved gate. So typically I would have replaced this gate and I will be eventually replacing it. So I'll build a proper gate to go in here. In fact, we'll probably use uh, timbers that we cut down in the woods here uh, to build this gate, but not right now. I don't have the time for it. But I can at least make this gate function. And that's really all I was attempting to do today was just make sure that the gate will open wide enough to let somebody walk through and then that it would close again and that it could be latched. The chicken wire and the fencing are really all that's holding the gate together, but they do function. All I had to do was put a new post in here. The uh, outside rail for this gate was completely rotted out at the top. So just a new piece of lumber stuck in beside it and screwed off is sufficient enough to give it the support it's looking for. Well, we broke one of the watermelons while we were cleaning up earlier, threw it in there to the chickens. They're going to town on that thing, so don't need to throw any scratch into them yet. But we did get the gate fixed. So this is now secure. That's gonna hold the chickens in. It'll allow us to get in and out. And we got the fencing removed off the top of the hill, got all that grass cut down, as well as cutting it down in the garden. So now Marty can get into her garden to uh, finish the harvest. We still got quite a few peppers on the vine and we gotta get those things off. We do appreciate you joining us on the Return Homestead today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please take a moment to do so. And while you have that window open, if you do us a favor, hit that thumbs up button. That's going to let the algorithm know you enjoyed the video and they'll share it out with more people. And we'll see you next time.